don't work with women, sorry, don't wear the wrong one, don't wear the wrong one, no, don't work with animals and members of the Royal British Legion because they're all a pain in the backside to work with, quite honestly. <laughs> you do your own thing. So, welcome this morning. Hopefully, you've got a hymn book. Uh, two of our hymns are in the hymn book, and one's printed out, but I've not got a copy of the printed out thing, but I think I might need to, if you've got a spare one, I can just have a look at. Marvellous, thank you very much. If part, if part way through a service you think it doesn't know, doesn't look as you know what they're doing, you're quite correct. But it'll be fine. Quite all right. So please stand for as we sing number 37, Jews. Thank you. It's just felt like a thing.
They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. together in the presence and house of God to take part in the hallowing and dedication of the standard of the one upon the branch of the Royal British Legion established in this place and to witness thereby to the noble ideals and great purposes inspired by Almighty God which animate the members of the Legion such purposes being the succour of those of our brethren who are still serving in our military forces and those who have served those who have fallen out by the way of life, the care of widows, orphans, and other dependents of those who serve, the fostering of brotherly love and comradeship amongst all its members, the remembrance of the ideals for which we serve, and of our fellow citizens who have laid down their lives for us, and also the preservation of true loyalty and devotion to our Queen and country at all times, and in all places. To this end, I call upon the members of the Legion and the whole congregation here present to offer humble prayer to Almighty God, that he will bless this standard now to be dedicated to his glory, and that he will inspire the members of the Legion to carry out with a single heart and devoted purpose the high aims for which they are joined in fellowship. Our help is in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Shall we go that again? I don't should be quite got that right. It's like humble there. We're the bottom of page two. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and earth. Marvellous out of bed. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. If you'd like to join with me in the first part, which is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord God of our fathers, who this lead his people through countless sufferings, keep us, we beseech thee, ever mindful of thy mercy. Pour thy blessing upon the peoples over whom thy servant Elizabeth, our sovereign lady, the Queen, is ruler. Unite us in the bond of brotherhood and in the service of our country, that the offering of our life's work may be acceptable to thee through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Grant, we pray, the Almighty God, that we who here do, on do honour to the memory of our brethren's royal sacrifice, may be filled with the spirit of their love and courage, and forgetting all selfish and unworthy aims, may live together to the glory of thy name, and in the service of our fellow men, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do dedicate and set apart this standard, that it may be a sign of our duty towards our Queen and country, in the sight of God, and a symbol of the service of the Royal British Legion, we are called upon to render. We yield thee hearty thanks, most merciful Father, that thou hast put it into the hearts of these thy servants to join together in the fellowship of the Royal British Legion in this place and to desire to carry out its aims and purposes. Let thy fatherly hand be over them. Let thy Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so guide their meetings that they may set forth thy glory and help forward all the great work to which they have given themselves, so by their witness and their labours the spirit of love and comradeship amongst those who have served may be advanced in this place. And loyalty and devotion to Queen and country may be established here on its sure foundation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Stand Amen. Stand Order. Stand up. We may standing as we sing our second hymn today, which is. I vow to be my country, which is on the separate sheet that you should have been given as you came. <laughs> Some of you were probably here. And sadly, he died in April of this year. He was 98. He fell in the 2nd Battalion of the East York Regiment, the 3rd British Infantry Division on D-Day. 7.25 a.m. he was in the initial assault. B Company was in. He fought all the way through, ended the war in May 1945 in Bremen. I got him here. His eyes were going, in, well, yeah, his eyes were going here, everything was going quite honestly at 98. And I think, but for Cole, probably be here today, not that he died of it, but when you've been stuck in a flat 
and all you've done is gone to the toilet, gone to the kitchen, gone to the bedroom, basically, that lack of mobility meant that his lungs never got used, he got fluid on them, got pneumonia, and the rest is history. But when he went up on that beach on D-Day at 7.25, and I've been there, when he went up, a significant item went up with him. Before they fought, they were getting ready to cross the, uh, the channel to Normandy, and they stayed at a place called Waterlooville. Now, a house point for anybody who can tell me where Waterlooville is. Near Portsmouth. Well done, yeah. It, near Havant, near Portsmouth. And they were, uh, they were there, and the ladies of Waterlooville uh, sold a flag for them, and made a flag for them. And on the D-Day, that flag went up with them. And here in my copy of the East York's Regiment, the Duke of York's own in the war, I have it, you may see it, but there is a picture. There is a picture of the flag that the ladies of Waterlooville sold and it led them on that day. Why did I mention that? Well, because on the day of my dad's funeral, which I took, that flag is kept in the museum in York of what is the Yorkshire Regiment. It's been through various incarnations because of the gradually they've shrunk things, you know what I mean? We've shrunk to what it is. On that day, that flag was brought out of the museum and was there at my dad's funeral. And you won't really see it very well, but that's myself and my brother and the very flag that went up with my father on d -Day. It was the only thing there at his funeral that had been written all those years ago as he went up on that beach as a young 21-year-old. I have two children. One is 25, one is 20, well, three children, sorry, I've got two boys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two boys, 25 and 27. In fact, one's 28 later this month. The thought that they might be involved in war now, I think, wow, well, if we depend on you two, we might as well put up the white flag now, quite honestly, because if there's no internet, you know, no internet connection, no one could do anything. Well, I think my father was 21, and a very young 21. Flags throughout the history of war have been rallying points. The idea of rallying the, around the flag. The idea is if the flag goes down, someone picks it up and lifts it up, it's a rallying point. If the flag's going forward, it's something to drive us forward. And my father, when he went to, I don't know whether he, I don't know whether it went to you know, the exact second, whether it came up 20 minutes later or five minutes, what I do know is that in that period of time, in that first assault, that flag and the other standard of these York went up with them. In, some of the words that I, I said that was in the other service, it talked about a sign. Flags are a sign of something. They represent something. You see, John here talked to me, he said, the county standard is the senior standard. It's got to go out first. It bows to no one. If the Queen was here today, we would say she's the senior person. No, she's not bow to anybody. Be the President of the United States, be, you know, someone from, know who you are, she's not bound to you. No, there's a, there's a way we go about these things. And in, in this context, the county standard takes precedence. There is an order of things. They're a sign. They represent something. And here we are in a church. And churches are by their very nature signs. I, by the fact that I'm in fancy dress, I'm a sign. That is the whole idea. That we are not an entity in ourselves, but everyone in churches, everyone who comes through the doors of churches, should understand that they are signs. They point us to something beyond ourselves. In churches, they point us to Jesus. Without, there is no church. Flags represent something. They're a sign of something. That flag that's in that museum, I've not been to the York Museum to see it, but I shall go sometime if, when we get back to some kind of, if we ever go back to some kind of normality, I shall go to the museum and see it in its proper context. And I shall muse upon the fact that that flag was there on the day, 6th of June. 1944, 7.25, give it take five minutes. I don't think anyone was actually literally timing them as, as they went up, but it was about that time. It's a sign that means something to me. Flags that mean something. My dad, for years, and I mean years, decades, would sell poppies. For weeks before, in fact, when he died, so my three, I, I, I was when he moved house, in his garage, he had boxes and boxes of poppies that he didn't know what to do with. Because basically, they were left on the previous year. He used to sit in his, in his dining room, before his eyes failed, and he put the pins in the poppies. 
So when he sold them, he didn't have to mess about. The pin was already proper. And at the end of a week, his thumb was just raw and it was bleeding where he'd gone through into his, good to, into his finger, gone through bang. And his, his thumb, it was just worn out. It was bloody, literally bloody, the blood. He saw poppies and probably into his early 90s. So the Royal British Legion has some part of my heart and I was fortunate to go back two years ago uh, for the 75th anniversary um, that was sponsored by the Royal British Legion. I think they, was, they wanted to find 250 and they've got about 240 of us and I went back with him and all those other veterans who were there. My understanding of my father's when he died is that there were only two other people. He was one of the last three of the, my understanding, you know, who, you know they can only tell so many people. As far as you can tell, there were only three left of the East York Regiment who were in that assault after, I think, 800 men. A, B, C and, and, and D Company. And there were three left. And one of those men, there were two that were left, one of them was hoping to come to the funeral, but unfortunately, age got ahead of him. But anyway, I can talk for him and so I better be quiet. You know, your best thing is to come and hear me. What I'm trying to say is, actually, flags are a symbol. They're a sign and they are meaningful and they mean things to us. And long may it continue. In a world where everything's on someone's phone or, or you know, it's all by the internet, we'll send you an email and a text. Actually to touch something, to feel something, to see something which is meaningful, actually it's still of substance and means something to us today. Even at the first lesson. We are going to stand in a moment and sing our first hymn. During the third hymn, I will go and get the standard and present it back to, to, to the bearer as we draw close uh, to the end of our service. Would you remain standing after the hymn as we're going to sing uh, the national anthem? Thank you. Uh, the hymn number, by the way, is hymn number 547. Oh God, our help in ages past.
by the front, quick march. And the bearer escorts as for the act of homage. Walk us on, Lumi. 